What have you got here, sir? Um, matchlock musket. A matchlock musket. So this gun, we're looking at about some of 16th, 17th century, very simple mechanism. He's got a trigger on this, but he pulls it, a burning piece of match, which is rope, that's truly treated for so it catches fire. He's brought onto the pan a small amount of gunpowder, which will explode. That will then go through a little hole in the side, a touch hole. There's a touch hole. There inside. If you want to get a closer look, come and see us after the display. The explosion will go through a touch hole. Hopefully, that will light the main charge, the gunpowder down the barrel. Make it go bang! So, let's have a look. So, musketeer, in your own time. So, first off, he puts a small bit of fine gunpowder in the pan. He's now getting some more gunpowder. He's using his flask to measure it out. He pulls that straight down the barrel. And a bit more. Now we're back. There we go. Next up, what's he going to do? Well, he needs a ball if he's going to shoot anyone. But in this case, we don't want to shoot anyone, so he's going to put some wooding down there. In this case, a bit of cloth or paper. And this is to hold the ball in place on top of the gunpowder. So when he points his gun down, he doesn't lose the charge. And also, it packs it down nice and tight, so it will come out with a nice big bang. So, there goes the ramrod. Remembering to take it out, because otherwise he's going to fire his ramrod. The gun is just about ready. He's attaching the slow match to the gun. And making sure it's in the right position. As you see, it takes a long time. Are you ready now? Excellent. Right. Now, a few things before he fires it. If you've got any dogs, can you make sure they are on lead and you've got them? Because they might run away at great speed. If you've got any small people, can you make sure they stay on the other side of the safety string that's all around our arena? If they come into this area, we're going to have to stop this display. The other thing is, it might be a bit loud, so you might want to cup your hands over your ears when they shout, have a care. Because have a care means they're out to fire the gun. Don't stick your fingers in your ears, just cut your hand over the ears when he shouts, have a care. So, musketeer, in your own time. Some blunderbusses. Oh, we like our blunderby. 
which I'm fairly certain he must be the plural of blunderbuss. And the Y makes sense. There we go. Right, that's now the rules. So we've got this little blunder boy here. Can you tell us a little about this? is like Captain Scully. Hey, it's me, little blunderbuss. You clear ship sticks. No problem. So what he's saying here is all the other guns fire a small ball of lead. This gun, and these guns, you can put oh, 15, maybe 20 of those balls in there, and a handful of shot, which is very tiny balls, and fire the whole lot. So we just clear the decks. If you're attacking a ship, the deck of the ship might have 20, 30 people in a very small, compact area. If you fire a blunderbuss in that area, it's going to hurt. However, it's a very short range weapon. I take one of these down the range and it bounced the balls off a wooden target at 20 yards. But at 10 yards, it sliced the three foot section out the middle. So, close range, horrible stuff. Right, oh, over you gents, let's load these. So, bigger sharpers than the other guns. And in fact, he's topping it up with extra. Oh dear, here we go. Now, as I say, a handful of well, gravel, nails, pistol shot, and some gun, sh gun shot as well can be going down here. For safety reasons, just for the paper, I think, don't they? Incidentally, you might notice also the barrels are a lot wider. So are these, what, 10 gauges? Yeah, so both, that's a one inch. That's a one inch corner of these. That's a big old gun. And you see the flare at the end. Which I'll try not to that pointed at me. But uh, the flare at the end there is to help load the gun. So a nice big wide flare makes it easy to pour everything down the gun on a ship where you might be pitching around the weapon. The flare doesn't make the rockets the actual shot expand, it's something big, just the live size of the barrel will do that. Are you ready, gents? Ready. In your own time then, off you go. So that's most of the small arms. Got any more small arms? Right, next up we've got some anti personnel stuff. So, as well as the handheld guns, you can also have bombs. Have we got any bombs today? Ah, our musketeers back. Now, bombs go back a while. What we're talking about here is grenades. This is a metal sphere full of gunpowder with a fuse. So, you light the fuse, throw it at your enemy and they blow up, throwing shrapnel and metal all around the place with about three metres in all directions. Very nasty on land, on the deck of a ship, devastating. So, in your own time, you can light them and throw them. Jack, is that lit? Yeah, that, that, that's lit. Jack, can you uh, go somewhere else with that one? Uh, his one is on a slow fuse, the one that's just been thrown is on a quick fuse. Uh, but Jack, that's burning down. Oh, there we go. You might notice that wasn't a very large bang. For safety reasons, we used a cardboard one. The metal ones were a little bit illegal. Uh, Jack, that was metal. Um, Jack, Jack, Jack. Uh, Shall we deal with this? Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Because we escort out. Oh, that, he's put it out. Okay. Thank you, Jack. I think he's on the rubber again. Oh, and another bomb. There we go. Happily, no dogs chasing it yet. That's good. It may have gone out. Ah, yeah. Not always perfect. Right, shall we do the big stuff? Yeah! We can do better than that. Come on. Shall we do the big stuff? Slightly small one. This is a swivel gun. So, I believe Dirty Dick's in charge of this. Let's have a chat with him. So, tell us about your swivel gun. Oh, 
on. He's gone short. Okay, well, I'll tell you a little bit about it. So, a swivel gun, these are often attached to the side of the ship, and it means you can aim it in all sorts of directions. And again, it can be loaded with a cannonball. It'll be quite a small one on this, but on the other hand, if you take a half a bucket of musket balls, pour them down there, add a bit of shot, a few rusty old nails, ram that whole lot on a big charging gun pallet, and you fire it across the deck of another ship, you're going to get a take out, oh, maybe 10, 20 people all at once. Nasty, eh? Yeah, we love them. Right, okay, dirty deck and gun crew, in your own time, off you go. So, he's got a big charge gun pallet. Once again, it's wrapped up in paper and ready to go. A lot more than any of the other guns. You certainly couldn't hold this gun and fire it. Hence on the big stand. Now, I think he's trying to find a pricker. This is a long pointy bit of metal. This is going to go down the touch hole, which is the top of the gun. Push it down the touch hole. And he's piercing the paper. So he's got a clean run into the gun powder. Now, fine priming powder, so very fine gun powder. He's pouring this down the touch hole, so you've got a whole line of gun powder going all the way to the main charge. Now, of course, we haven't put a ball in this one, because it would go for what? About half a mile? Yeah, about half a mile, and, well, the Royal Navy might not be happy about that. So, again, no, good, no ball this time. All ready, Jim? Gun is actually cast brass, very popular maybe because it's a 
last. I'm right behind the last. He's got, he's ramming, he's ramming it down the boards. All the shots are going to be You'll notice he stood to the side of the gun, because although there's no cannonball, if it does fire, it will still kill. And tear his arm off. In fact, that's why we've got a safety device to make sure no one looks in front, because even in an empty gun, in front of it, it fires, that can kill you. The actual shot wave from the gun. So when we say keep out of the way, we are very, very serious ones. He's also wearing gloves. His arm's pointing away from the gun, barrel of the gun, which when it does fire prematurely when he's hitting it with a stick. The stick will shoot out by speed, and he might lose a bit of skin from his hand, but he won't lose the whole arm. If his thumb was pointing towards the gun, he'll probably lose the whole arm, which would be unpleasant for him. Right, he's pricked the charge. Now comes the fine gunpowder again. Pile of it on the gun. Fire first, next thing. Now again, it's a big charge of powder. You may be well advised, especially smart people, to cut your hand hands over the ears. Are you ready, gents? Do you want to hear a bang, he says. I don't think they want you. Do you want to hear a bang? Yeah. Okay, maybe they do. In your own side then, Master Gunner. Yeah. 